Greetings, faith family and friends. Allow me to read uh, from Genesis chapter 22, and I'll be reading the first two verses. And it goes like this. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and Abraham replied, Here I am. Then God said, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. I think you would agree with me that the story of Genesis chapter 22 is perplexing right from the start. A huge crisis in the life of a man. Abraham's story is without precedent or parallel in the Old Testament. It was without precedent because Jehovah God had never demanded human sacrifice. It was without parallel because no one else had ever been commanded to do it. So here's the scene. There was heartache, brokenness, lack of understanding, how illogical all this was. Isaac, the son of promise, God's blessing to Abraham when he was 100 years old, but now to be sacrificed back to God who provided him in the first place. It all seems so improbable and impossible and unnecessary. Why? That question must have pierced Abraham's heart. But something you might have noticed as I read the Bible text earlier, it said God tested Abraham. This was a test. Now, a test is what you have to put someone through in order to draw out what is within, isn't it? We all go through tests. If you're a student, you know that. If you have children, your children will go through tests and examinations, be it PSLE, O-levels, A-levels, etc. The reason why we put them through tests and tests of varying degrees is because otherwise we would never really know if they understood the subjects and the depth of the subjects that they are learning. So what kind of tests might we expect from God? Please, can I suggest today, a test similar to Abraham's would not primarily be concerned with investigating whether we love our children more than we love God. Likewise, it would not be about whether we will trust God with our children. It would not even be simply about God testing the faithfulness of believers by asking them to surrender to Him the best they have. Actually, and don't miss this, I am convinced that the test, similar to Abraham's, seeks to determine the motivating factor in our relationship with God. In other words, what motivates you and me in our relationship with God? Is it God himself? Or is it the blessings he provides and the hope he offers? For Abraham, his blessings and hope were linked to God's covenant promise and therefore tied up with Isaac. In fact, God's tests may force us to step out of the comfort zone of our desires, our hopes, our expectations. In your faith and my faith, are these focused on what we get, be it hopes, expectations, blessings, or is it focused on God. Bible scholar John Walton suggests that if we want to devise a test that would be comparable to Abraham's, we would not ask, would you be willing to give up your child? Or you can fill in the blank to give up what is vitally precious to you. Instead, we would have to ask, and just listen to this, the question, would you give up eternity in heaven for God? What? But in the 1970s, Andrea Crouch explored this question in a song. The song asked, what motivates us to serve God? Is it just for heaven's gain? And the refrain of the song says it all. And it goes like this. But if heaven never was promised to me, neither God's promise to live eternally, it's 
been worth just having the Lord in my life. Living in a world of darkness, He came and brought me light. I don't know about you, but the lyrics are deeply challenging for me. Alongside this, some of you may remember the words of the John Lennon song entitled Imagine. Though Lennon may have seen heaven and hell as fantasies that prevent people from living in the real world, his words can also function to help us reflect on what our faith might be like if it was without the hope or threat of eternity factored in. The words of that song go, Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Would we give God a chance if there was nothing in it for us? Would you give God your life if He gave nothing back to you but Himself? Would your life have a place for God if you were just living for today? No heaven, no hell. Would your life have a place for God if you received no promise of blessings or hopes in living for today? Here's the thing though. It should be our aspiration, if not declaration, to respond to those questions with a resounding yes. You see, that was what Abraham did when he built his altar on Mount Moriah and bound his son and laid him on the altar, then took out his knife to slay his son. Here's the point. God asks no less of us than to be our all in all. Indeed, when all is stripped away and no hope remains, when in the dark and in the loneliness, in the emptiness, there is God alone, that is when faith stands up and is counted. Many times I hear the express longing to hear the coveted accolade. And there's nothing wrong with that, this coveted accolade. Well done, you good and faithful servant. I wonder though, is your faith and my faith robust enough that we long to hear the words said by God to Abraham, Now I know that you fear God. May these words one day also be the deepened longing that flows from our hearts. Amen and Amen.